Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. A lot to talk about with the markets, a lot to digest. We have Tommy Grisafi joining us as well as Christy Van on Chisef. Christy, I'll, I'll start with you because as you look at, we did have some planting progress this week, yet some question marks about more wet weather hitting some of those areas already seen snow pla- snowpack melt and, and flooding. Really, what is, is catching the attention of the market? Yeah, I think right now the problem is you have enough of both situations. You have areas that are having really good luck getting the crop in the ground, and they will continue to have good luck. The forecast looks to be open for a good chunk of places. But then you have your question on some other areas, like where we're at. You know, prior to this week here in Minnesota, tons of snow. The tree lines are still full of snow. You're still trying to melt it all in uh, into the Dakotas, and they have a chance for a lot of precipitation coming once again to Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota moving forward. I think the biggest question for this market is going to be what happens on week two forecast. The week two forecast is in disagreement between a couple different models right now. And once we get some clarification, I think the market can choose a direction. But right now, there's enough people that say, hey, we're not going to get what we need to get planted. And there's enough people saying we are seeing that progress that it's tugging on the markets and we're struggling to really point out a direction where we want to go. Well, and Tommy, I remember talking to you last year, last May, where, you know, farmers really struggled to get that crop in, but then boom, the weather switched and they were in the field. It was go time and it was amazing how much got planted. But as you look at right now, you talk to some of your clients in that North Dakota area, you know, how much possibly prevent plant are, are, are we looking at? Well, it's a little early. So we're approaching tax day. Uh, a better panic day would be, uh, one month from now. And then once we get past the first PP date, what we're all aware of, your viewers, us as uh, analysts and whatnot, is we're 550 D's corn on our way to maybe 550 D's corn. Last year at this time, we were $7 D's corn on our way to $8 D's corn. So those bushels, when Don Wick and I did that little boots on the ground crop tour, when we were with farmers in Arthur, North Dakota, planting on June 6th, they were planting 80-day corn hoping and praying that they had a nice fall. And they did. But that's not always normal in North Dakota. So for how expensive this crop is, is is the Northern Plains, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, up in Canada, are they willing to put the highest price crop they've ever planted into the ground very late? And a lot of things have to go right for that to go well. So if we get into to what Christine yourself said, if we get these rains, we have about three good weeks at the end of May, beginning of May, end of May to put this crop in. If we get into June days and it's raining, they're going to pull the plug and then maybe throw in beans or something. But it, the math of it doesn't look good. Not only time for corn, but we planted ABC last year, everything but corn. We planted canola. We planted sunflowers. We planted crops that people didn't even know we grew up there because the price of Everything was expensive. And the price of those everythings, edible beans and everything, have calmed down. Barley has calmed down tremendously. So there's not as much motivation to uh, put in a crop and it not go well. And financially, it could be a disaster. Yeah. So, Christy, Tommy mentioned some of those prices. As you look at some of those support lines, some of those price levels, uh, you know, what, what are the key levels that we need to watch? Yeah, right now we're focusing in on this 550 level for December corn. It's a level that needs to hold. You look at recent lows just below it. And so that's going to be a watch point for us to say, hey, can we stabilize here? We know we generated a good crop insurance price, but that only covers so much when you look at it. And then looking really at that $13 level for soybeans, we've came down and tested it multiple times and it just seems to be holding pretty strong. So we're going to trust that level. When you look at spring wheat, that's a whole different story. You know, you want to try and talk spring wheat with farmers right now, and it's the last thing they want to talk about. Profitability is not there. The outlook for planting, it's not there. And like you said, last year, they did have a really, really late spring, and they took a gamble on it, put it in because spring spring wheat was so high priced. And you know what? It actually worked out for them. They had great yields when you look at spring wheat. Uh, But this year is a little bit different. The profitability is not so much there. And I think you're going to look at a a producer saying, where is the profitability? Where am I going to start? And I think you're going to see them start on that corn, see what they can get in for corn. We also have to remember for the Dakotas, uh, they changed their ruling as far as prevent plants when you can graze it. And that's played a big role in encouraging people to utilize prevent plant and use that rule to say, hey, if I have cattle or I have a neighbor that has cattle 
instead of mudding in this crop, I can take prevent plant and then rent it out or utilize it for myself. And that's been a big benefit to those that are able to use that. So I would imagine you see some of those acreage being utilized in that way. Wheat crop conditions all the way to record cattle prices this week. A lot still to talk about. We'll do that coming up later on U.S. Farm Report.